Hello and welcome to a live Curve Prepping Break on Deep Program with Carrie Smith. I'm your host, Carrie, and uh, I hope you're having a beautiful Friday. Don't forget to hit the like, the like button and the notification bell if you like this channel and you haven't already done it. Sometimes they let you know when I'm doing videos. Sometimes. So uh, yeah, you can do that. If you are a returning regular, good to see you. I see a lot of you in the chat. I hope you're having a good day. If you're new here, I hope you'll stick around. We are going to be talking about the difference between ethics or principles, moral principles, having a principle that's that's inflexible versus ideology, a belief system that guides you. And I think this is really important because when I was in when I was in the left, the, the woke part of the left, you know, which has now become most of the left. Um, I didn't really understand the difference. I never thought deeply about these things. And I'm convinced that a lot of well-meaning people, especially younger people who were in that ideology, and, and not just that ideology, it could be in other ideologies, but that's the one I know. So I, I'm convinced that a lot of people who are in it, especially younger people, haven't really thought deeply about this. And so uh, I think it helps to uh, to untangle your thoughts uh, and to understand things better. And instead of just repeating ideological mantras to try and understand the difference between these things. So I'm going to be explaining that with an example. That's it's a great example. That's going to lead us into this conversation today. Um, so welcome. We have uh, for the regulars, I'll be brief about the announcements today. We are currently reading for book club critical dilemma by Neil Shinby and Pat Sawyer. This is about the rise of social justice ideology in the church and society. Social justice ideology being my old ideology that I was in for 20 years. It's also colloquially called woke a lot of the time now. We're going to be discussing this on Thursday, March 7th at six o'clock. You can be on camera in the discussion or you can be in the chat. So you have time to read this if you want to go out and get it. I'm also going to be doing an interview with the authors, which is exciting. So I hope you'll join us for that. Also, if you're in the Austin area and you want to come to one of my husband and I do house concerts, if you want to come to our house to a concert, we are we haven't sent the ticket link out yet. We're doing it soon. I think it's going to be this week. So if you want to get the ticket link, it's a private list that we email it to. We don't put the link out there publicly. Um, email me at deprogrammedpod at gmail.com. Our next house concert is going to be March 29th. This is the only place we've announced it yet. Um, so email me at deprogrammedpod at gmail.com and just put house concert in the subject line. April 27th. Uh, is it the 27th? I keep getting this date. Yeah, the 27th, which is a Saturday. There's going to be another Minds Fest happening in Austin at the Vulcan Theater. I'm going to be moderating some panels. There's some great speakers there, including Jimmy Dore, Sean Fitzgerald, who's actual justice warrior, Alex Stein, Lauren Chen, Ashley St. Clair, um, all kinds of people. If you'd like to come to that, uh, uh, you can find out information on, on the Minds platform. Look for Minds Fest 2024 and um, hope to see you there. Okay. Hello. Hello, Texas Sheep Lady. Hello, Deanne. I see I see some of you regulars. Okay, this, this subject, as I said, I want to start doing more when I look at the news, not just talking about what's in the news, but connecting it to the ways in which people think, specifically the ways in which people in my old ideology and social justice and woke think, and trying to help any of those people who might be watching better understand some underlying principles and truths and to help them untangle their mind. Um, I, I, I try and think like, what would, what would have helped me when I was in that world? And so I'm going to pull up something that's, I, I saw this yesterday. Thank you to mystery Chris for sending me this because um, he helped me. He was like, Oh, you got to take a look at this. And it, I think it's absolutely disgusting. Here we go. So this is a tweet from Change the Ref, and they are announcing a new platform called The Shot Line. And th this is in conjunction with March for Our Lives, which is the David Hogg anti-gun activist organization. 
they have put together using AI, they are taking the voices of dead people, okay? And they're using AI and using voice samples to take their voice and make them say things they haven't said. And they're using this for political goals, for political activism. They have a, they've set up a robocall line where you can go in and you can send uh, these robocalls using the voices and names of dead people to politicians to, in this case, with this platform, to argue against our Second Amendment rights and to say, you know, hi, and, and we're going to listen to one. I, I'm not going to I'm not going to paraphrase it. I'm just going to play it for you. I think it's one of the grossest things I've ever seen. And I'll be clear for anyone on the left watching, it doesn't matter to me what it is they're having, what, what the political opinion is that they're having these dead people voice from beyond the grave. It doesn't matter. And we're going to get into that. But this one happens to be, they're using it to, uh, the political opinion they're pushing is to ban guns. Okay. Let's watch this. Hello, I'm Joaquin. I was murdered at school by a shooter with an AR-15 assault rifle. My voice has been recreated using powerful AI technology, along with the voices of others who have lost their lives to gun violence. With our voices, we will call members of Congress confronting their inaction with the harrowing stories of how we were killed. We'll, we'll call, call again, and again, and again, and again, and again, until change is made. Because our stories need to be heard, and who better to tell them than us? But we can't do this alone. So we created the shot. Yes, but who better to tell than us? But they can't tell it. They can't tell you what their opinions are because they are dead. They have been robbed of their very lives. And now they're being robbed of their voice. From beyond the grave, they're being robbed of their voice. If you don't have an immediate uh, revulsion to this, an immediate moral, um, you know, disgust sensitivity that's that's raised by this, I would I I believe that something could be wrong with you. <laughs> Honestly, this is revolting. No one should do this to a dead person, not their parents, not anyone. What if their parents have a different political ideology than they do? and use their voice in a way that they wouldn't want. How do you know what they want? How do you, they can't consent. They're dead. You're literally putting words in their mouth. You're literally putting words in their voice, their very voice. This, this is one of the most revolting things I've seen recently. One of the most, the ghoulish things I've seen. A grave robber, a ghoul. I'm going to show you, this is, uh, this is David Hogg promoting this. Go to the shutline.org to call your representative using a voice of a victim of gun violence. So not your own voice, not your own voice speaking your opinion, but here, take, steal, rob the voice of a dead person to give your opinion. He says this with no shame. All you need to do is put in your zip code and hit call. Already, today already, 5,000 calls have been made using the voices of dead people recreated through AI to say whatever you want them to say. It's unbelievable to me. Here's their website. You can see here, it's paid for. It's sponsored by Change the Ref and March for Our Lives. They have all of these different dead people. And you can click on them and you can hear their voice that's been recreated with AI to say whatever the, or the activists at this place want them to say. 
and you can clog up the phone lines and send robocalls to our politicians in the voices of dead people. This is probably illegal. I hope it is illegal. I hope this gets shut down. I know that they've already said it's illegal to use AI to create uh, uh, fake voices or voices of, of existing people saying things they haven't said in consumer calls. It should also be illegal to do it for political purposes. Let's listen to this guy. Hey there, this is Mike Bond. Just need a minute of your time. Uh, no, this is not Mike. This is not him. You are desecrating these people after their death. It's not enough to stand on their graves. You have to reach down inside and rob them of their very voice and autonomy. I can't believe this is ha happening. I mean, I guess I can. It's like a Black Mirror episode come to life. And this... This is what... You know, I, I posted something about this and how disgusting it is. And this is what got my wheels turning about people who do, seemingly don't understand whether on purpose or naivete don't understand the difference between principles and ideology. Because I had this exchange on Twitter and I'm going to, we're going to walk through this exchange because it's a great illustration. And then we're going to talk about the difference between a moral principle and an ideology. So I shared this and said, this is absolutely disgusting which it is, and shameful. Putting words in dead people's mouths, literally in the voices, is political exploitation. And so this woman who says she's a feminist, agnostic, atheist mom um, who followed me, she says, well, I believe the parents of one of the victims of gun violence founded Change the Rep in the shot line. They probably have the voices of other victims because the families gave them audio of their deceased loved ones. It is disgusting and shameful that they died. Okay, it is. It is disgusting and shameful that they died. Don't put words in my mouth or anyone else's mouth who thinks this is also disgusting and shameful. It is disgusting and shameful that they died. It's also disgusting and shameful to rob them of their voice after they've been robbed of their very lives. And it doesn't matter who gave permission. It doesn't matter if there's it's their parents. Nobody has the right to do this to a person after their death. What if their parents have different political ideology than they do? There are some parents of the victims of mass shootings who are very loud activists against taking away gun rights. I'm sure you guys can think of a few. Should they be able to take their dead child's voice and make an ad saying, Hi, I'm so-and-so. I'm a, I'm a victim of gun violence. I died in a mass shooting. I am." 100% against trying to commit a great evil of robbing people of their Second Amendment rights using my name and voice. I urge you, congressmen, to protect our Second Amendment rights. Listen to me, who died in a mass shooting. Is, is that okay? If you think one is okay and the other's not, something you, you're a hypocrite. You, something's broken down. You don't understand, you don't have any principles. You don't understand the difference between principles and ideology. The people who don't understand this difference, they're, they necessarily become hypocrites. They necessarily will say anything goes in pursuit of my ideology, but not in pursuit of that ideology, meaning you have, you have no principles. You're like, yeah, it's okay to lie if it's for good, if it's for what I think is good, if it's for my ideology, it's okay to lie. Hey, that person's lying in support of something I don't agree with. That's bad. They're lying. You don't have a leg to stand on because you just said lying was good. If it's for your ideology, that's what this person is basically arguing. It's okay to use the voices of the dead as long as they're saying things I like. But if they're saying things I don't like, then it's wrong. You have no principles. 
and this person blew my mind because I said, yes, it is, it is disgusting and shameful that they died. It's also disgusting and shameful to put words in their mouths for politics. And so then she said, it's disgusting and shameful to use the grief and anguish of parents whose children died from gun violence to lobby for the NRA. First of all, I haven't lobbied for the NRA. Who are you talking to? What are you talking about? You're creating some straw man now. But okay, let's say I was doing that. I agree with you. It would be disgusting and shameful to lobby for or against the NRA. Don't you can't see this to lobby for or against the NRA. You can't say it's disgusting and shameful to do this thing only if it's to support a, a political opinion. I don't agree with that's you're a hypocrite. I have to rein in my disgust on this because I, I told my husband on today's video, I can't just sit here and say, you're stupid <laughs> because that's it. I don't want to turn people off who might be listening and don't understand this distinction yet. Cause I didn't used to understand it. I really didn't. My thinking was so garbled. I was so brainwashed by social justice. I was ideology first, you know? And, but once you get out of it and you can look at this clearly, it does blow the, it blow your mind that someone could be this obtuse. So this person says it's disgusting and shameful to use the grief and anguish of parents whose children died from gun violence to lobby for the NRA to not only use it, but to try and shame the parents for trying to save possible future victims. It doesn't matter what the parents are trying to do. What if they're trying to save, save future victims by using their dead child's voice to argue for the Second Amendment, for the NRA? Then what would you say? So I tried to help this person understand it by giving them an illustration. I said, girl, you don't have a leg to stand on here. Would you want anyone, even your parents, using AI to put words in your mouth after you were dead and cannot consent to support political opinions you may not agree with? And I gave an example. Hi, I'm Blue Wolf, and I think gay marriage should be illegal. <laughs> like I'm trying to drive it home to her. Is that okay? To say that, her, her name is Blue Wolf. Hi, I'm Blue Wolf, and I think gay marriage should be illegal. I said, it's wrong. It's shameful. No one has a right to desecrate the dead in this way. No one, no one's parents or anyone. What if I took those voices and I made them say, hi, I died in a school shooting. And using my debt to commit a mass evil of denying people the right to bear arms is wholly repugnant to me. I suggest you fix the real problems by healing the family, providing incentives that strengthen marriages and promote healthy families so that lives like mine won't be lost due to broken people raised in broken homes in a broken society. It's wrong, I said, no matter the political message. You are grave robbing and using people's voices who were already robbed of life. Now you're robbing them of their very voice and autonomy when they cannot consent. You're a ghoul. Here's what she said. This is amazing. She says, you put quotes around something with my name in it as if I actually said it. Please delete that tweet or be reported. <laughs> yes, I did put. Yes, that's the point. So I guess you do get it. You do get it then. You just proved my point. It's wrong. That's the whole point. Yes, I put your name in something you didn't say. I'm showing you that is wrong. <laughs> This is why I said I have to be careful and not just yell into the microphone. How stupid are you? But seriously, how stupid has, has your ideology made you? You can only see that this is wrong if it's you, if it's if it's your name and voice being used, and if it's some if it's being used for something you didn't you don't agree with. It's wrong either, no matter what is being said. I could not believe, I couldn't believe this. I just, just a moment, a moment of silence for this person's blindness. They have to be a bot. No, they're not. They're not a bot. This person reported me. This is not a bot. I, I know it's, it's hard to wrap your head around someone is this stupid, but it's true. There are a lot of people like this, I guess. I, I, I'm, I'm just flabbergasted. Yes, it's, it's funny. It's funny. It's like, 
yeah npc thoughts it's like breakdown of thoughts you don't get they don't get it <laughs> i can't believe it you put quotes around something i said but my name is if i actually said it please delete that <laughs> they report it yes okay okay we're gonna talk about this because I know it's, I also know it's true because I know people who their, their brain is short circuited like this. And there are a lot of people who are, have been swayed by, have been pulled into my old ideology, social justice or woke, who they're, they're thinking, their critical thinking, their ability to reason things out has, it's become short circuited by ideology. I had a mother reach out to me yesterday saying, can you do some video series or point me towards something for my child who's a young adult who's gotten pulled into this? And the short, it's short circuited, the thinking short circuited. And she's like, you know, my child, as a lot of, a lot of parents reach out to me, they're like, my child is, is a really good person. Has, she has a really big heart. And I know that, I know that they pull in well-meaning people. And so I am going to start uh, doing that. I'm, I'm going to have consulted with parents before who want to prepare their children for college to try and inoculate them against um, the programming, the woke programming. I'm going to start doing some deprogramming consulting, some deprogramming specific episodes on, you know, how to try and untangle the thinking. So this is a good this is a good test for that to try and explain something as if they might be watching or someone might send them this clip when I clip this. Texas Sheep Lady, they carry their brains are fried, not just short circuited. Some are just short circuited, I do believe. Mine was short circuited. And something jump started, jump started it, you know? Um, and I think you can untangle the minds of some of these people. So we're gonna try. So what's ethics? We're going to do a very simple, simple for anyone to be able to grasp conversation about this. Let's just go to the dictionary. Ethics. Ethics are moral principles that govern a person's behavior or the conducting of an activity. Or ethics are the branch of knowledge that deals with moral principles. Ethics are moral principles. Okay, what's a principle? Principles are fundamental truths. Fundamental truths, things that are true. A fundamental truth or proposition that serves as the foundation for a system of belief or behavior or for a chain of reasoning. A lot of times you hear these referred to as moral truths. So ethics ethics are principles. They're moral truths truths it's it's we're talking about what's right and wrong here universally we're talking about objective morality now one of the problems with social justice and woke ideology is because it does have um a postmodern influence it's not just a marxist influence it also has a postmodern influence and so one of the ways they get around one of the ways they short circuit the brain is that they 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 try and get around people's ability to reason by convincing young people, young well-meaning people, that there are no objective truths, that nothing is objectively true, that, for example, gravity doesn't exist. <laughs> they try and convince. Let's take let's take one that's happening right now. They are trying to convince, and they have convinced a number of young people. That biological sex isn't real. That there's no bio there's no such thing as biological sex. They're doing this. They're trying to teach this. I'm sure if, if you're online a lot, you've seen this. They're trying to teach that sometimes two plus two equals five. They're trying to say there's no objective truth. There's no objective morality. So this is one of the great evils of social justice and woke is that they'll reflexively lean back on this. Now, it's a 
it's it's weird because at the same time that they say there is no objective truth, there is no objective morality. At other times, this, this is why it's a brain tangling ideology. At other times, they say, well, there is objective truth, there is objective morality. And if you look in the social justice or woke religion, the woke ideology, they have certain supposed, supposed, I say supposed because they don't follow, they don't actually, these are not actual principles. They will bend any principle in the, in the ideology. By the way, let's, let's just define this real quick. What's an ideology? An ideology is a system of ideas and ideals, especially one which forms the basis of economic or political theory and policy. I would go even more basic than this. It's a system of ide ideas and ideals it, that can form, it forms the basis of how you view the world. It's like a belief system. It can be political, it can be religious or economic, yes, but it can be political or religious. It's the way you view the world. It's how you think the world works and the best way to operate in the world. And it's made up by, with these principles, it's made up with different principles in the in the ideology. So what are some examples of principles? We're going to talk about principles. And then we're going to talk about what are some woke principles, for example. So here are some very basic examples that everyone should be familiar with. Some examples of moral principles. Don't kill. It's wrong to kill. It's morally wrong to murder people. Speak the truth. Tell the truth. You should tell the truth. That's a moral principle that most people at least say they agree with. If you look at people's behavior, I don't know if most people actually th believe this in this principle, but that most people will say they do. Say the truth. Respect the property of others. Like, don't steal. Okay. Um, this is a great, sometimes I go to Quora to see how people answer this, right? Get the pulse of the people. Here's a great one. What's the difference between ideology and principle? This is a great, clear explanation. Ideology and principle are related concepts, but they have distinct meanings. Ideology re refers to a system of idea ideas and ideals, especially one that forms the basis of economic or political theory and policy. It often encompasses a set of beliefs, values, and theories that guide an individual or a group or society. Ideologies can be broad and encompassing, such as liberalism or conservatism, or more specific, such as feminist ideology or environmentalism. I would add to this, for example, social justice is an ideology. It's a way of looking at the world. And under the umbrella of social justice, this belief system, you have feminist ideology, you have critical race theory, you have queer theory, you have all these other ideologies that are now lumped into it, have become part of it. Environmentalism. Principle, on the other hand, typically refers to a fundamental truth or proposition that serves as the foundation for the system of belief or behavior. Principles are often seen as guiding rules or norms that inform ethical conduct and decision-making. So ethical conduct, again, it's about moral principles. It's about conducting yourself in a way that's good and right versus wrong or evil, or bad. Principles can be personal, such as honesty or integrity, and they can be more universal, such as the principle of justice or the principle of nonviolence. In summary, ideology tends to encompass a broader set of beliefs and theories that inform a particular worldview, like liberalism, like conservatism, like libertarianism, like social justice ideology like Christianity, like Islam. While principles are fundamental truths or rules that guide behavior, 
and decision making. Principles are so much more important than your ideology. Principles are, because they're fundamental truths, they're moral truths, they should be inflexible. And if you find yourself, they, they almost serve as a fence post to keep you honest, to keep you good, doing good, to protect you from the dark part of yourself, the dark part of human nature. A principle, for example, don't lie, will guide you, even if the dark part of yourself wants to tell a lie, because in this case, you think it's justified. You can rationalize it with that human brain and say, oh, but it's good. To, I think in this case, it's that person deserves this. You know, the principle of don't steal or don't cheat or don't lie or don't murder. Those are to protect you and others and society from the dark side of the human heart that we all have. If you live, if you try and live by principles, it'll protect you from any kind of ideology that might take you astray, whether it's woke or something else. When a person has been taken away by their ideology, they've forgotten, or maybe they never had the moral principles to begin with. They never had a belief to begin with that some things are wrong and some things are good. Some things are good and some things are evil. Maybe they never had that. So they get to a place where they're like, it's okay to lie and cheat and steal and do this thing that's wrong or bad if it will further my political goals or my political party or my belief system or my religion. It's okay to do that. It's okay to murder for my religion, right? That's what that's what I that's what people who have been possessed by ideology can justify. Or it's okay to lie or to use the voices of dead people if they're speaking my ideology. You lose yourself completely. You become a slave to the ideology. You become possessed by the ideology. You're not rooted in anything. There's no fence post for you anymore. You're on shifting sands. You're not on a strong foundation. It's like, there's a Bible verse about this. It's like you've built your house on shifting sands. If you live in Texas, this is a good analogy because a lot of our homes are pier and beam. And, you know, they don't have a concrete slab, a strong foundation. And so we occasionally need to uh, get the foundation leveled again because a hundred years will pass and the house will be all lopsided. It's, it's on shifting sands. There's no strong foundation. Your pr guiding principles should be inflexible. They're there to protect you and others from yourself, from the dark side of yourself, from ideology, from con artists, from, from uh, predatory belief systems, from predators like that. If you live by those, and they're very basic. They're very basic. I believe, because I'm a Christian, I believe they're written on our, like, they're written on our hearts, is what some people say, encoded in our DNA, <laughs> our, the very essence of ourselves. That's why you don't have to be a believer, a Christian, to share some of the tenets of Christianity, some of the principles, the moral principles, because you know it on your heart. Don't lie. Don't steal. Don't rob somebody. Some of the social justice, I, I mentioned it is an ideology. It is a system of belief. It supposedly has principles because all, all ideologies do. But the principles in social justice, they don't stick by them. It's an ideology first ideology. It's the ideology at all costs. So they never they never abide by the 
the, all of the principles consistently. So some of the principles they, they claim that they have when in this belief system, social justice or woke, they claim they believe racism is wrong, which is great. We share that. We share that belief, that principle. Don't be racist. Don't treat people differently on the basis of race. Don't treat people differently on the basis of sex. It's wrong. They say they believe in that. In fact, they say their whole ideology is about ending that, right? But they break that principle over and over and over again. Look at their behavior, not at what they say they believe. This is a good rule for humans in general and for yourself, for me. If you don't know what you believe, look at how you behave because it'll, it'll show you. So look at their behavior. They say they believe racism is wrong, treating people differently on the basis of race. But they say in order to fix it, we have to treat people differently on the basis of race. They support, they, they push out into the world the idea that, that it's not only okay to be racist, that it's not only okay to treat people differently on the basis of race, but that we should do it. Why? For good ends. Because it's, because it's good, because it's in service of our ideology, which is about ending racism. So that's why it's okay. Do you see how they abandon the principle entirely in the service of the ideology? They abandon the principle entirely. They let go of it entirely. It's okay, they say, to treat people differently on the basis of race. Even though we're against treating people differently on the basis of race, it's okay to do it. Why? Uh, uh, well, because uh, we have a new definition of racism that says it's not technically racism to do that. And um, that racism is prejudice plus power. And so this is, this is, you're in a cult. They're twisting your brain. They're giving you new definitions and redefinitions to try and make this make sense, but it doesn't make sense. They're giving you new definitions so that your brain can justify, can jump through the hoops necessary to justify betraying one of what's supposed to be the most basic principles of the social justice ideology, which is that racism is wrong. The reason I call my old ideology social justice or woke, the reason I call it evil is because it does this to people. It takes a lot of well-intentioned, well-meaning young people, especially a lot of women, and it turns them into foot soldiers to do the bidding, to do the work, to do the behavior of the very thing they think they're fighting against. So they get into it because they oppose racism or they oppose sexism, and it, it puts them to work behaving in racist and sexist ways, treating people differently on the basis of race and sex. And it twists their brain to think this is somehow not racism. It's somehow not sexism because we've got this new definition. It's an equation of prejudice plus power. They've abandoned the principle. Principles are important. <laughs> They're much more important than ideology because the heart, what's that expression? The heart is fickle. There are some other ones about the heart, but it, you can't always trust the heart. You can't always trust yourself. If you uh, study or like I do cult documentaries, um, cult literature, if it, you will notice that this happens over and over where people who are intelligent get pulled into these systems of belief, these ideologies, and they lose the ability to reason. And from the outside looking in at it, you're like, wow, can't they see that this is crazy? They're now doing crazy things. But their brain's been so twisted over time inch by inch where they can't see it because the ideology is first for them. It's, it's, it, they've gotten to a place where their ideology, they're not even guided. They're not guided. They don't hold themselves to any principles anymore. The heart is deceitful says Texas sheep lady. Yes, that's it.
Good night, Mister says. I believe the quote is, "The spirit is willing, but our flesh is bruised and spongy." <laughs> I haven't heard that one, but that's a good quote. Thank you. Principles are important. Yes, yes, they're important on a personal level, and they're important on a societal level. They principles as a as an individual. become very important to me because they're how I govern my own behavior. So the judge, it can't be me. The heart is deceitful. The can't, it can't be me. The rules, they can't be mine because I'm a human and I will find ways to break them. I will find justifications. That's human nature. You know, the famous Alexander Solzhenitsyn quote, the line dividing good and evil runs down the heart of every man. We have great capacity for good. We also have great capacity for evil. And we can deceive others if we if we justify it to ourselves. We can deceive ourselves. So I can't be the judge. That's that's why part of the reason why I'm a believer. I believe in God. There's more to it than that, but that's one benefit to my ideology, to my belief system, to Christianity, because God says, don't lie, Carrie. He means don't lie. <laughs> he means, oh, don't lie, except if it helps you do this thing, which you think is for good in the end, right? Like, no, <laughs> it's a, it's a, it should be an inflexible ideology or sorry, inflexible principle. And, it, and so it's good for a person because as an individual because it helps you govern your be behavior. It helps you know how to be in the world, to have these moral truths, these moral principles that function as fence posts to keep you in the area of good behavior. I sometimes encounter atheists, some atheists, not all, of course, there's all kinds of atheists in the chat. I even have some, I have an atheist mod. Give it up for Pirate. I don't think he's here today, but but I have encountered some atheists who say, and maybe you've heard this, it's a common refrain where they say, um, you know, I don't, they say, I don't, I don't need a religion. I don't need a God to tell me what's right and wrong. You know, you're a weak person if you do. And that kind of scares me about a person because I think they're not in touch with what Jordan Peterson, Carl Jung call the shadow self. They're not in touch with the shadow. They're not aware of their own heart and their capacity for evil. They think of themselves as somehow have it. They have a pure, completely pure heart and soul. You, you do have a good heart. You also have an evil heart. And some people, especially when they're not aware of the dark side of, of ourselves, they can get pulled by bad ideology, by bad um, desire, by by uh, bad people. They can get pulled until they're living almost exclusively in the dark, in the dark side. And so principles are, they help me as an individual to know how to be in the world. But they also help society. As a society, we've we've been chipping away at and destroying a lot of the moral principles, the moral truths that we as a society had collectively agreed upon, a lot of them based in Judeo-Christian beliefs, a lot of them based in these, these moral uh, instructions, like, like from the Ten Commandments, don't lie, don't steal, don't cheat, don't murder. We've been chipping away at a lot of these, and there are fewer and fewer that we all agree on. And I think if you look around, even if you're you're fully ensconced in my old belief system, my old ideology, social justice, look around, check in with your heart. Like your heart knows something's really wrong with society where we're at currently. This has happened before. Culture ebbs and flows. Humans have been through even darker periods than what we're in now. But if you look around, I mean, it, 
we're in a place where sometimes you look at your fellow man and you just wonder like, how, how did some of you get there where you're arguing for this? The example I gave today may seem like a small one, but people who are saying, yeah, you can use the voice of the dead, uh, 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 use it, cre recreate it, use it. Um, as long as it's for something I agree with, like, that's not a small example. It's a sign of, of bigger things. There are people now arguing about, you know, that, that children, children who we as a society have collectively agreed based on moral principles and truths that children, the truth that children are developmentally different than adults and that they deserve to be protected by laws, by society from certain things. And we've collectively agreed forever. It seems in this country, it feels like forever. I know it's not, but it feels like forever that we've all been on the same page. Like, yeah, um, in the law, we should obviously say, no, children, they don't have the ability to consent to sex with adults. That's a, That should be illegal. That's because that's morally wrong. You know, children don't have the ability to consent to smoking cigarettes or drinking alcohol or driving a car or buying a gun. And, and we, we're going to protect children and say, no, you have to be an adult to do those things. And now suddenly we find ourselves at a place where there are adults, parents even, who are out there arguing, saying children can consent to having their breasts cut off in an elective gender affirming surgery. As long as we call it gender affirming, it should be okay, right? Kids should be able to do it, right? Yeah, we they're out there saying we we children can cons yeah, children can decide and consent to give themselves hormone treatments that could sterilize them, that have sterilized a lot of them. No. That's immoral. It's wrong. It's objectively morally wrong. And if you're arguing for that, I'd say you're you're in the abyss. You're in the dark place. You're so cut loose from any founding principles, moral principles. There's nothing guiding you. You're just bobbing and flowing wherever the tides take you, wherever your ideology takes you. Sure, do anything as long as it supports my belief system. Yeah, cut my kid's breasts off as long as it supports my belief system. It should never be okay. I actually, when I first started leaving the social justice left, the social justice woke world, and I was trying to figure out what I th thought about things, and I was doing it slowly, principle by principle, because those are foundational beliefs. Again, think of a house. You want to build your house of belief from the ground up. So you start with like, what are the most basic truths and principles that I believe in? And a lot of those, I, that's why I kind of joke sometimes that when I started reading the Bible, I was like, oh, oh, this is like a shortcut. <laughs> what if I just read this and stuck by? I was, maybe God's trying to save me, save humans a lot of pain and heartache by putting it down here in a book. Well, nobody told me Jesus, he just said it all. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of funny. It's a part of my brain is like comedy brain. So I always think of things like that. It's kind of humorous, you know, but it is. I was looking at like, wow, don't lie. <laughs> I wasn't smart enough to get, it's like the cliff notes of life. I didn't get the, I didn't read the cliff notes. I thought I didn't need them. I was like, I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to, I'm going to draw this map myself. <laughs> <laughs> um you know at the end it's like oh the map i'm drawing is already there <laughs> it's already in the bible <laughs> the maker's manual that's a good way of putting it <laughs> yeah so um when i first started coming out of woke and social justice and leftist ideology i was trying to figure out i started with guiding principles and I would say this to anyone who is in it. Maybe your parents sent you this video and you're like, oh, I don't want to watch this. I want to watch this right winger or whatever you think I am. Um, I would say, see if you can start with something very basic. 
can you list out what what do I believe? Get yourself one of these, uh, you know, these really cute yearly planners. I always get one of these because I like paper calendars and I like, uh, they have pages at the end of each month where you can go over at, at the beginning of each month and the end, of like, what are my goals and how do I get there? And what did I accomplish? And and they also have year long, big picture things of, in the different areas of family and career or um, friendships or home. And, and you can do, you, it just causes you to do some big picture thinking, like to zoom out. Right. And you can get yourself one of these and you can sit there and, and write down like, who am I? What do I think about things? What's important for life? When I get to the end of my life, what's going to have been important? What's meaningful? And what do I believe? Do I have guiding principles? Do I have moral truths that are fence posts that, that I, don't, I don't break for anyone or anything? Do I have that? To, something to keep me from being a hypocrite, which is in our human nature to be hypocrites, something to try and keep me from becoming a hypocrite. What are those for you? It might be something very basic, like some of mine. I think it's wrong to lie. I think it's wrong to steal. It might be very basic things, and it should be. Get to the very basic guiding principles. And I think it'll help to solidify in your mind a little better the difference between principles and ideology. It'll help protect you from yourself and from others, from bad ideologies, from cults, from cult leaders, from con artists, from predators. Because sometimes you can see in con artists, especially very popular ones, whether they are Christian whether they use the cloak of Christianity or they use the cloak of woke or they use the cloak of anti-woke or conservatism, the cloak of conservatism, whatever it is, you can, these guiding principles will not only help you keep yourself in check, but it'll help you see those people better because you'll notice, wait a minute, that behavior doesn't, that behavior is like breaking a very basic moral principle that I thought you held, right? You'll be able to spot them better. So I would suggest doing that. Um, and so when I first started leaving woke and social justice, I started doing that. And I was writing down, like, what are my guiding principles? What do I believe? And I was trying to untangle all of my thoughts that had been so twisted in 20 years in the social justice cult. And I started building from the ground up. And... A lot of people call me a lot of things. They still do all the time. As I was kind of joking, some people call me right winger. Some people call me a lefty. <laughs> some people call me um, a transphobe. Other people say that I'm a trans enabler and that I have pet troons. Uh, there, you know, I've been called both from both things, all things. And some people were like, "Oh, you're no, you're a libertarian." So I started looking into libertarianism and I never called myself that, but I did say, you know, I, I think I believe in a lot of these libertarian ideas and I still do, but I definitively decided now, I think today, February 16th, 2024, I'm not a libertarian though. I might believe in a lot of libertarian principles like don't hit people and don't take their stuff, right? <laughs> and that government should be smaller. Absolutely. And the individual over the government. I believe in all of, I agree with all that. But the, it was actually this, it was actually this phone call thing that helped sway me because I don't think the market is going to just, I don't think the market is, is, is what we trust to determine moral principles and moral truths. I don't think the market is going to do anything to stop people from doing something wrong, like taking the voices of the dead and using AI to make them say whatever you want. The market's going to encourage that. People will do that. And this is where I think we need a law. We do need a law to say that, no, that's wrong. 
we've already done it to say you can't do that for, you know, to send robocalls using AI generated voices to consumers. We need to make it very clear you can't do it for political reasons either. You can't send robocalls with dead people's voices saying whatever you want them to say to politicians. Think about the implications. Think about people getting phone calls of famous leaders that they respect, like Martin Luther King, from beyond the grave, robbing him of his voice and putting words in his mouth. Hi, I'm Martin Luther King. And I think you should vote this way, blah, blah, blah. Or hi, I'm Martin Luther King. And I think this political belief that's currently popular, blah, blah, blah. I think racism is prejudice plus power. I'm Martin Luther King. You know, making him say things he never said and wouldn't agree with. We're not far from that happening. It's probably happening already if they're using the victims of of mass shootings voices. This is so unethical. It's so immoral. Not just because of what it does to the dead, desecrating them. They can't consent, robbing them of their voice, robbing them of their autonomy. It's a lie. It is a lie. By the way, this is a basic it's a basic violation of the of one of the most basic guiding moral principles. Don't lie. It's a lie. You're putting that in his voice and he didn't say that. Um, but in addition to all that, it's it's you're doing it to manipulate people and to push ideology and to manipulate people. And think of the people who were like, wow, I didn't know Martin Luther King Jr. said that. I'm going to vote that way. He didn't say that. <laughs> He didn't say that. You're swindling people. You're lying to them. You're conning them. So I think we need a law for this. So I guess that means I'm not a libertarian. <laughs> there you go. You're a caritarian. <laughs> thank you, Rock Lexicon. Um, oh, Doc Savage. Thank you for the super chat. Thanks for hanging out. He says, hey, Carrie, I challenge you not to cry at the chaplain's speech at the end of The Great Dictator. I personally get misty just thinking about it. Whoa, I have to see that. You know what? We've been watching, my husband and I, um, it's a series, it's a documentary series about World War II. And, oh, if, I don't know if he's still in the chat. He's driving. He's on the way to a show. But, Anthony, if you're still in the chat, remind me the name of that series we've been watching. It's excellent. It's sad. There's obviously, it's about World War II. There's so much in it I didn't know, um, and there's so many poignant moments, and there's you get to see human evil. You get to see, yes, what I'm talking about, the, the, the evil that all humans are capable of, and it uses all original footage. It's nothing recreated. It's, it's incredible, but you get to see this human evil, and you, and you get to hear from these different survivors, German soldiers. Russian soldiers, American soldiers, civilians, you get to hear in their voices, their interviews about all different aspects of it. And it's just, it's worth watching. Um, and oh, let me tell you one of the poignant moments, because this just got me. There's been several moments that made me cry. There's this cap, this uh, soldier, he was a British soldier. And this is when the British forces were fighting um, Rommel. You know, Hitler had moved into North Africa and they were fighting uh, Rommel's forces in North Africa. Um, also, a lot of North African soldiers and, you know, Tunisian soldiers and um, Arabic soldiers. There were all, all, all different races and that were there fighting for the British against the Germans in North Africa. Okay, so at, at one point, thousands of them surrendered and were captured and were loaded onto these trucks where they couldn't sit, they couldn't even turn around. They all were standing packed like sardines, much like the trains where they would, where the Germans would, um, you know, put all the Jewish people in there, just pack them in. And so they were driving for days where he was like, you know, we were starving. We couldn't sit down. You couldn't even turn around. People were relieving their, their bowels and just standing there like cattle and people were dying on their feet. And at night they would stop and unload the dead people. And at, 
this prisoner of war said, you know, um, they eventually took them to Italy and they paraded them. And there's footage of them parading them through the streets of Italy, these prisoners of war and people, you can see the evil in the crowd. It's so terrifying and sad because it's a human thing. You can see the evil in the crowd. You can see these Italian women. It was a lot of women doing this, spitting at them, spitting on them, jumping out of the crowd to like hit these guys, these salt, these prisoners, the British prisoners of war who were starved already, treated like animals. And you know, the, what, what motivates that person in the crowd who needs to do that? We've all seen that. You see this a lot with social justice warriors. It's like they're possessed by something, this darkness. They want to get out on this other person. Let me spit on you. Let me hit you. You know, it's like the crowd screaming to crucify Jesus. It's just this like ravenous evil. And so you see that in the footage. You see these women spitting on them, hitting them. And then this guy, the survivor who's talking, who's very old at the time they interviewed him, of course, he said, and then a little girl, a little Italian girl ran up to me and pushed a peach into my hand. And he, I'm sorry, it's so, I, it's an emotional part of the series. He said, she pushed a peach into my hand and I just caught my hands around it and ate it really fast. And he's like, nothing ever tasted better than that peach. He ran up, put a peach in my hand and ran back and lost in the crowd. And he said, it just, he's like, I thought about it my whole life because whenever anything gets bad or you see the evil of humans or you see bad and it seems like the whole world's against you. He's like, I always remind myself that there's going to be a girl with a peach <laughs> and it just, ah, oh, just what a beautiful story. He's like, you know, it just meant everything to me. And, um, yeah, I'm Epic Mike. It is beautiful. You guys have to see this series. There's just, it's just full of these human moments. And, you know, there's a part of um, even, a, oh gosh, there's another tragic part, but it's a depressing part. And you even see the humanity of the, the German soldiers, you know, you even see that of some of them. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I would, I would, I would definitely recommend it. It's um okay if I, I don't think my husband's listening right now because he hasn't told me the name of the series, but uh, I will find out and I will come back here and put the name of this series. And I think we're watching it online somewhere. It might be on YouTube even. I'll put it below. It's on Netflix, he says. And it has something to do with reels in the title or lost footage. It's a new release, so it's easy to find. Let me see. I'm going to look it up. Because now that I've told you about it. Oh, it's called Watch World War II from the Front Lines. Here it is. I know we always talk about the entertainment that's woke and entertainment we hate. This is some entertainment that's worth watching. It's on Netflix, World War II from the Front Lines. It's all, like I said, it's all historical footage. None of it is reenactments and it's just incredible what they've pulled together for this series and I'm learning a lot um I'm also I'm learning a lot about history and dates and places and things that happen but I'm also learning a lot about humans you know a lot about human nature that's why I I, I love stuff like this and yeah it's sad there's sad moments but there's also those beautiful moments like that with the girl with the peach so Okay. Yeah, that's it. World War II from the front lines. Rock Lexicon. On the topic of World War II, Angel Studios is releasing a film about Bana for this fall. He and Willem Wilberforce are some of the best examples for standing for principles against the crowd. Is that, I see, I don't even know who that is. Are those the guys in that picture who didn't go with the crowd, that famous photo? I need to watch this. Thank you for letting me know. Okay. I'm going to wrap this up. I didn't want this one to be too long. Please let me know in the comments below if you're, especially if you're watching this later, or if you just sat and hung out with us and watched this today, 
How can I be more clear when I talk about this, the difference between principles and ideology? Let me know if you have questions, comments, suggestions, and I appreciate you guys. Um, John says, oh, they were the pastors who would not support Hitler. Okay, yeah, I definitely want to read about them. Um, but let me know what you think about it, and I hope you have a great weekend. And I'll see you on Monday, 1 o'clock, our usual time. We have some great shows coming up next week. Uh, hit the like button, all the things, <laughs> whatever, whatever. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. And, you know, all those things. And I'll see you later. <laughs> okay. Take care. Bye.